Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me um, to this workshop. Um, my presentation today um, is a result of some of the work I've carried out uh, throughout my PhD thesis, uh, which I recently submitted and was supervised by Gianluca Vallo. In fact, my supervisor is Gianluca Vallo and Dana Heath, and they are co-authors of the work that I'm presenting today. And um, my thesis was originally meant to cover a uh, substantive uh, problem in HTA, which is the methodology called um, population adjusted indirect comparisons, such as matching adjusted indirect comparison, MAIC, and a simulated treatment comparison, STC. Um, however, when I was um, researching the application of these methods, uh, I found another side of the story, um, which is about the importance of carefully considering which treatment effect is of interest in HTA. Um, treatment effects can be marginal and they can be conditional. And these different effects have different interpretations. And uh, I think that for population level reimbursement decisions in HTA, uh, my view is that the marginal effect is of interest. And so usually we will use a multivariable outcome regression. So this is a regression model of outcome on treatment and covariates to inform average effectiveness in health economic evaluations. And we usually use this um, outcome regression to either account for uh, covariate imbalances um, between studies or between treatment arms in a given study. And so there are a bunch of examples, um, controlling for the effect of prognostic factors in a non-randomized study, correcting for chance imbalances in an RCT, a meta-regression, for instance. Um, a regression is used to account for differences in the covariate distributions between different studies. Um, to transport inferences from a, from a trial that is not externally valid to the target population for the decision. And then finally, the case study, which uh, I'm going to outline and which is related to my thesis, is when we are performing a pairwise population-adjusted indirect comparison um, to compare treatments with a common comparator arm. So this is the anchored scenario. And um, this is a special case of scenario four. Now, the issues are that a multivariable outcome regression, the treatment coefficient has a conditional interpretation as opposed to the population level interpretation that is required for population level reimbursement decisions. This occurs mainly when the outcome model is nonlinear. Um, and when the outcome model is nonlinear, often effect measures are non collapsible. And this means that marginal and conditional estimates do not coincide, and they can actually be quite different. In fact, most of the models that are applied in HTA, for instance, logistic regression for an odds ratio, if we are analyzing response rates, or a Cox regression, if we are analyzing a survival, um, they involve non-collapsible measures of effect, such as the hazard ratio and the odds ratio. But the truth is that conflating these measures of effect is not only an issue when the measure of effect is, is non-collapsible, also when it is collapsible, estimators that target different estimates will have different variances, and this will have an implication in terms of the propagation of uncertainty to the wider economic model, and it's dangerous for probabilistic sensitivity analysis. So um, the solution is, is marginalizing these, these coefficients of, of, of the conditional outcome regression. And the case study that we are dealing with is population adjusted indirect comparisons. In the anchored scenario, the manufacturer has access to IPD patient level data um, from its active treatment A and needs to compare treatment A to another treatment B that is likely already on the market for reimbursement purposes. And there's this common comparator C. So this is the anchored scenario. And um, there's another trial comparing treatment B and treatment C but the manufacturer does not have access to patient level data for this trial. The manufacturer only has access to aggregate level data. And the standard methods, for instance, the Bucher method or uh, the standard network meta-analysis, they are biased when heterogeneity in the treatment effect or variant distribution across trials. These are typically called effect modifiers. And so 
what we do is that we want to get a covariate adjusted effect for A versus B um, in the linear predictor scale, assuming add effect, additive effects in this scale, for instance, for the log odds ratio, for the log hazard ratio. And that will be the difference between the treatment effect that we get for A versus C and the treatment effect that we get for B versus C. The treatment effect we get for B versus C, this has been derived from a, from a publication. And almost in the, there will be a marginal effect available. Um, the, there might be a conditional effect that is available, but this is likely incompatible in the indirect comparison because conditional estimates actually vary across different covariate adjustment sets. And so, as I've mentioned before, the treatment effect for A versus B should target a marginal effect to inform a reimbursement decision at the population level. And uh, therefore, the, the effect for A versus C must target a marginal effect that is compatible with the published estimate for B versus C. And um, when we combine estimates that are incompatible and the measure of effect is non collapsible, we will get bias. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll um, share some references at the end of the, of the presentation. And so the objective of population adjusted indirect comparisons is to estimate this covariate adjusted effect for A versus C to later inform the covariate adjusted effect for A versus B. And uh, in order to do this, we can use weighting, uh, matching adjusted indirect comparison, or outcome regression. This has typically typically come under the name of simulated treatment comparison. Um, and there are many implementations of simulated treatment comparison, but there is only one that um, can actually give you the marginal effect that is desired. And um, I'm actually an advocate for performing outcome regression uh, as opposed to weighting, because I think that it has some advantages. Um, I find that it is more statistically precise and efficient, particularly when the sample sizes are, are small and there are big differences in the covariate distributions. And so, because this uh, workshop is about the use of R, um, here is my, my setup uh, for the code that I'm presenting. I will require three packages, um, one for performing a non-parametric bootstrap, another for simulating covariates from a copula, and another for uh, fitting a Bayesian regression and, and, and drawing outcomes from a posterior predictive distribution. And so I set my seed, clear the directory. My R version is 4.1. And uh, I load this uh, simulated data, ACIPD, and DC aggregate level data. Antonio, I'm sorry, uh, your mic is a little bit in and out. I suspect it's something you cannot uh, adjust, but if it's just a, something of a loose jack or something like that, maybe you could take a quick look. Thanks. I'll, I'll try to speak a, li a little bit louder. Sounds good already. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and so the, the ACIPD consists of 200 subjects, and we have baseline covariates, treatments, and binary outcomes for, for these subjects. And then um, the BC ALD, 600 subjects, consists of aggregate level covariates and summary outcomes. And um, we first perform a covariate simulation step because we will be marginalizing with respect to the BC population, but we do not have patient level data for this population. And so we simulate individual level covariates using a copula. Uh, and we assume that we have normally distributed marginal distributions with the means and standard deviations from the aggregate level data study and the linear correlations of the patient level data. And we simulate a pseudo population of a thousand subjects to minimize sampling variability. And this is a code um, which uses the copula package in R then we move on to our working outcome regression. And this is the model that we will use to capture the relationship between the outcome and the covariates and treatment. And this is fitted to the patient level data. Um, we have a conditional expectation of the outcome. Um, for logistic regression, this would be the probability scale. We have a link function, the log it for logistic regression. We have a vector of regression coefficients for the prognostic variables, beta one. Another vector of coefficients, uh, interaction coefficients for the effect modifiers, which these are imbalances in, in effect modifiers, interactions, heterogeneity, um, which, which trigger, which motivate the use of, of um, population adjustment in the anchor scenario. And then we have a 
treatment effect for uh, A versus C, uh, which uh, is beta T. Uh, and this, we call this model the Q model. And the goal is to integrate average or marginalize out this model over the relevant joint covariate distribution, which in the case of these pairwise comparisons is the, that of the BC population. This is an assumption. Um, and so an option is to use maximum likelihood estimation, but we can also use Bayesian estimation. I'm going to talk first about maximum likelihood estimation. So the first thing that we do is that the fit, we fit the logistic regression to the patient level data using a maximum likelihood to the GLM function. And then leaving the simulated covariates at their set values, we apply the coefficients of the regression uh, parameters to predict a pair of hypothetical outcomes for each subject. So we are now imagining two hypothetical scenarios one where all of the subjects under this target BC population are assigned to treatment A, and another one where all the subjects are assigned to treatment C, uh, where here one encodes treatment A and zero encodes treatment C. Um, and so we plug treatment A um, into the maximum likelihood fit each individual to compute the conditional expectation when all subjects are under A. Um, and then we do the same thing when all subjects are under C. By plugging treatment C into the regression fit for every simulated observation. And so we have these mean predicted outcomes, which in the case of the logistic regression, these are conditional, uh, average conditional uh, probabilities. Um, and we now have two, uh, this is a controversial term, but let's call them counterfactual data sets. And the reason I call them counterfactual, what outcomes might have been observed had subjects in a different population in which the trial has not actually been conducted, received treatment. And so we have these two data sets. It's the BC pseudo population, when all of the have been assigned um, treatment A, and now we have the BC pseudopopulation when all subjects have been assigned to treatment C. And um, so we, this, this outcome is the occurrence of an adverse event. And this treatment A, the active treatment, it, it appears to lower the probability of this um, adverse event. Um, and so we estimate the marginal effect by transforming from this probability scale to the linear predictor scale and calculating the, the difference between the average linear predictions. Um, and this is the mean difference in expected log, log odds. Some find that the log odds ratio is not a very interpretable measure, so they might prefer odds ratios, relative risks, risks differences. These can also be computed, but we followed uh, the traditional approach in direct treatment comparisons, which is to perform them on the linear predictor scale, because also the effect modifiers are being defined on this scale. Uh, and finally, the estimated absolute outcomes may be desirable in health economic models, for instance, uh, with an event. And also in an anchored comparisons, if I don't have this common comparator C, and I want to compare uh, the mean absolute outcome of A with the absolute outcome of another treatment B being evaluated in a single arm trial, or for instance, in another RCT, but with a different uh, comparator. And so variance estimation is not easy um, because it's hard to derive the standard error analytically because the marginal effect, is, when the outcome regression is, is nonlinear function of the components of the regression parameters, and what we're going to do is that we're going to resample using the non-parametric bootstrap. And um, there's a lot of code here, but basically what this is, this is, all the code that I have outlined before, I've put it into a function that will be bootstrapped. And um, use a, a thousand resamples um, in the bootstrap because, you know, I, I use, we try to use a greater number of resamples we find that the, the, the results over different random seeds don't actually change much. Um, and there are very limited gains in accuracy. So this is usually you figure out the number of resamples kind of by trial and error. And um, we can now recover a point estimate of the marginal effects and an estimate of the variance. 
Now, uh, see, the previous conversation has been a lot about uh, integration within a health economic model. In my presentation, I, I'm not going over this step, but um, if you were to do integration with a, with a, with a health economic model, this, these point estimates are, are not really of interest, but they are of interest in a, in a biostatistical inference uh, kind of case. Um, uh, anyhow, um, and so finally, I'm going to present an alternative to um, the maximum likelihood estimation version, which is the Bayesian version, and we fit the outcome regression using MCMC um, and using the package um, R stan arm, which is a wrapper of the, the MCMC uh, package stan. Uh, Just MCMC. two minutes now, Antonio. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll go quickly, <laughs> um, but I don't have I don't have a lot left, um, and then um, so marginalized now over the posterior distribution of the regression parameters, as well as the joint covariate distribution of the population. We draw a vector of predicted outcomes under each intervention from the posterior predictive distribution. And um, the um, essentially follow the same procedure as we did before. When all simulated subjects are under treatment A, the health draw of the conditional expectation when all simulated subjects are set to C, we have this alternative hypothetical data sets um, and a different condition expectation. Then we use these condition expectation draws to draw the outcomes from the posterior predictive distribution. Uh, and then we have a matrix, which is the number of draws times the number of simulated subjects for, the, for each draw effect estimate. And we average out the outcome predictions over the rows, over the rows, and then we take the difference on the local ratio scale in this case, and can uh, estimate the average and variance of the marginal effect for A versus C empirically from the draws. Um, finally, some references. Um, firstly, for the dangers of combining incompatible effect estimates and direct treatment comparisons, there's there's this paper, uh, which shows you how the conventional version of STC produces bias uh, because of an incompatible comparison. And then finally, these uh, parametric G-computation methods are outlined in the second paper, uh, plus a new method, uh, which we have developed called multiple imputation optimization, which might be useful when the outcome model is not a generalized linear model, in which case this procedure is, is, is more complicated. And we also outline an example of parametric G-computation in the context of Cox regression and survival outcomes are very common in oncology appraisals. So, so this might be relevant uh, for some people and uh, more content and code to be available soon for this survival uh, examples. And acknowledgements um, to my uh, co-authors, to peer reviewer number two, who I don't know uh, but, uh, who he or she is, but motivated a lot of this work. Tim Morris and David Filippo have also been instrumental in motivating this work. So uh, thank you very much. Lovely, Antonio. Thank you very much. We were, I was a slightly late starting. So I think we have two minutes for questions here. Perfect. Um, I'm just I'm just going to look for uh, any uh, hands that are going up. If anybody wants to ask any questions, um, there, Antonio. Okay. All right, is somebody unmuted there? Is somebody going to go for it? I think there's a couple of points in the chat as well, James. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So just while I'm, you know, does does anybody want to come forward? Uh, from the from the from the chat to, to voice their 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 questions there. Hi Antonio, I guess I can go forward and just quickly ask: Do you need to have the correlation for the covariates um, from the aggregate studies for your method to work reliably? Um, well, um, the, the correlations really uh, the assumptions that we make in terms of the correlations. Um, they do make a difference if we have an outcome regression which has second or higher order interactions between the actual covariates um, and treatment. Um, there is, you know, where, where, where those correlations start having an influence on the, on the effect estimate. Uh, and um, reproducing those correlations incorrectly uh, might lead to some bias. Um, in the case that, that we do not include these um, second order in terms of an interaction between two covariates and treatment in our outcome regression, um, 
it does not seem to matter what assumptions we make in terms of the, in terms of the correlations. It would be great um, if the um, if the um, the studies published more more um, detailed uh, summary information about their trials. Um, we could reduce the number of assumptions that are made if for the aggregate level data study there were some some information was published in terms of in terms of the correlations. If this information is not published, uh, then we have to make some assumptions like we have made. Um, then finally, um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the objective is to of these population adjusted indirect comparisons, the pairwise ones, and this is a this is actually a limitation is that the comparison is stuck in, in this BC uh, aggregate level data population. Um, and because the objective is to, to make this comparison, in this population uh, also have to try to reproduce it as well as possible. Although this is also a limitation, limitation if this population is not representative of the, of the external, of the target population for, for routine clinical practice. Super. Thanks very much, Antonio. For, so uh, I think a, a kind of a, a complex presentation and an, but an important issue. And I'm very glad to see the papers describing the, the bias. This seems like a looks like a very successful uh, PhD topic. I know you, you, you've not yet defended yet, but uh, that looks like a very good contribution. And it's nice to be able to have that backed up with us. So thanks for sharing that, that today. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation.